welcome back to the second of two vlogs taking place here in St. Thomas. I am coming to you from our very last day. Today is actually our departure day, so by the time you watch this, sadly, we will be home already. But I wanted to be able to film with this beautiful background because no matter how cute my wallpaper is at home, it does not match this palm tree swaying in the breeze. Also, yes, there is a breeze. We are working with the sun and you are balanced precariously, partially in a pool and partially on a chair. So we're just going to hope that this will work. I didn't actually plan on making this video prior to arriving here. I thought I would do one on Keneal Bay, which you've already seen. I will link that above. But this video is actually coming to you as kind of more of an informational situation. I used to strictly do like info Disney videos and I felt like because we did so much on this trip, I wanted to tell you what I thought was worth your time and or money if you ever do choose to come to St. Thomas or St. John. Before I give you all the tips on what is like a must do here and things that you possibly could skip, I wanted to show you a little haul of items that I got from Sam Peel. They came right in the nick of time. I was able to try them on, take the pieces that worked and pop them in my luggage literally hours before we we departed so I want to walk through what I got from them everything will be linked in the description box below so I brought four of the pieces with me to st. Thomas I brought the white bodysuit the yellow two-piece the pink romper and the white dress I had visions of wearing the white dress when we went on our sunset cruise, which I'll talk to you about in just a minute, it felt a little bit too revealing to be wearing on a family vacation. Ultimately, I think this will be a date night dress. I like that I can still wear a bra with this because it ties in the front so it hides your bra straps. Ideally, you wouldn't need to wear a bra or you could wear a strapless, but as we've discussed in previous videos, I'm a little too chesty for that, so I do need to wear a bra, but I like the fabric on this and I do think it would also make a really cute beach cover up. I didn't end up wearing the white bodysuit. Honestly, I brought too many clothes with me and I knew that I wasn't going to wear all of them. If you watched the packing video, I think I shared that I was 100% overpacking because I had the space to do so. I was very excited about that. So I will try this on for you here and I will definitely wear this over the spring summer months, but it didn't just make its way into wardrobe for vacation. The pink romper I did wear. I wore this to dinner one night after an action-packed day and I love the color. I think this works really well with darker skin or with a tan. It's probably pretty on every skin tone, but it just screams like vibrant summer to me. I love that it came with a bow. It was easy to wear. It doesn't wrinkle. I will wear this all summer. And lastly, the yellow two-piece set. I don't know how I will style this as anything other than a cover-up. I love the idea that it's high-waisted, it's ruched, but the top is a little too flimsy. Sorry if you can hear a rooster in the background. The top is a little too flimsy for just a strapless bra underneath. I might try to see if I can get like an underwire or cups sewn into it, and that would make it a more viable like day-to-day -day piece for me. But I wore this as my beach cover-up when we went to Keneal, and it was comfortable. It does wrinkle a bit, but that's okay with me, especially as a beach cover-up. And again, I think the color here is really fun. There were two other pieces that came in this haul. I will leave them here on the screen. They were both too tight for my current body. One was this really cute, tropical floral romper and it just felt like suction cups to my body. I must have ordered the wrong size here, but I will leave it linked here on the screen above so you can see what it looks like. And anything else that didn't work for my body, I will leave linked here. Oh, the other thing that I did get and absolutely loved was a pair of woven rattan earrings. So these are not them, though you will see them in a lot of this vlog. These are similar, right? I love a white and tan earring, kind of a bigger, lighter piece for the summertime. So I absolutely love these earrings. They're drop, but they're not heavy. These are a little bit heavier. Wore them all week long. Okay, let's get into the do's and don'ts of St. Thomas. So I mentioned in the Keneal Bay video that, I'm sorry if you're wiggling around, it's really windy, that my mom rented us a villa on Lime Tree Beach. So each of the like coves and beaches here on St. Thomas have their own very cute tropically themed names and 
I will insert footage here of this sweeping vista that we get to see. We also have access to this gorgeous pool outside. The outdoors of this space 100% are the highlight of this house. There are several resorts on St. Thomas and St. John. All are expensive no matter where you stay. And because we are a party of 10, we needed a space to accommodate all of us because we wanted to be together. There are pros and cons. I can't tell you if renting a villa is right for you and your family. The pro is this gorgeous outdoor area. It's very private. The caretaker here actually does live on the property and he has been incredibly attentive for the first few days we struggled with water we would go to turn the showers on but the water line wasn't on so we were just able to shoot him a text and he would come right up and fix them for us any issues we've had he's been attentive to that being said there have been a few issues they're also doing construction in this area much like a lot of the areas on the island so we haven't had Wi-Fi all week we haven't been able to watch TV not that we were really excited to do that but it would have been a nice like break for the girls to be out of the sun another one of the cons is kind of the upkeep of this space i have impossibly high standards for what it means for something to be clean and i do feel like the villa is in general clean and our sheets were very very clean which i appreciated but i feel like there's not an attention to detail in things like corners also as a con personally for me, I am allergic to something in our room. Each of the bedrooms does come equipped with an air conditioning unit, but the main spaces don't. So if you're coming here during a super hot month, that's something you might wanna ask if you're going through VRBO or Airbnb. You may want to ask about construction and how they keep their water here as well because we couldn't shower more than one bathroom at a time and we didn't run the washing machine, the washing and the dryer were actually a huge pro while we were here, um, but we couldn't run those while somebody was in the shower. We would kind of wait until the night to do that. Um, but I have 100% been allergic to something in my room and I've woken up every day with like a huge swollen bottom lip and my eyes are really puffy. Nothing hurts, but I even brought my own pillowcases to use. So I'm not sure what I'm allergic to in this space. Another con for me is that there is light, early morning light in our room and I sleep in a cave at home. If you're okay with the early morning light, like my parents and my sister, that won't bother you. Um, but we did look at the layout of the house and bring blackout shades with us. We can't reach where the light's coming in because the ceiling is too high and they are skylights. So we were able to put a blackout shade in the girls' room because all three girls are sharing. There's a bedroom here that has two sets of bunk beds and that's worked out really well. So we put a blackout shade in their room. But do your research, look at all of the reviews, ask questions if you're going to spend this kind of money on a villa or a rental space. The rooster is excited. Let's talk about getting to St. Thomas. I would say this is not necessarily an easy island to get to. It did take us two flights. None of them were necessarily difficult. I didn't think it was as far south as it actually is, which has actually been wonderful because the weather has been stunning all week. We've had two rain storms and they come and go super quickly. So the weather has been beautiful. It's been in the 80s. I'm not complaining about that by any stretch of the imagination. Something to note is that when you disembark the plane, when you land in St. Thomas, you do actually have to walk down a flight of metal stairs right onto the tarmac, which I thought was really cool. But if your carry-on is heavy, if you have mobility issues, that could be something to note. The airport here is teeny tiny. So when you go to collect luggage, there's only three carousels, which makes it easy to navigate, but also means that when you are returning to the airport because of lines, you have to go earlier than you would anticipate going. All of those hurdles we can get over. What was the most challenging, I think, was the car rental. We rented a vehicle because Actually, in fact, we rented three, one for each family, because we knew we were going to want to travel and have adventures on the island while we were here. My recommendation for you is to make sure all of your paperwork is in order. There wasn't an easier rental 
because my brother-in-law and our family we rented from two separate places i think both were not necessarily easy to rent from but get something with four-wheel drive we rented a jeep the roads in st thomas if you are from america where we drive on the right i don't mean the correct i mean the right side of the road here in st thomas you drive on the left side of the road yet the steering wheels the driver's side is still on the left so that takes some getting used to i did it once semi successfully but the roads here are mountainous and when i say mountainous i don't mean like we were driving up and down i mean when you get to the top of the road you have to look over your steering wheel to see where the road goes I have never been somewhere where the roads are not well kept, but also inherently dangerous based on what we're used to. So something to prepare yourself for, but if you're going to travel, you can go by open air taxis. There are no seat belts. It's kind of just like bench seating and you slide in. I don't know the schedule for them or how those operate, but we've seen them everywhere all over this island. Make sure you're getting yourself something with four-wheel drive that you feel like you can go over humps and bumps with because you'll need it and if you're renting a jeep they're all hard tops but you can pop the two kind of almost like car skylights off on the driver's side so in the front side we ended up with a four-wheel or a four-door jeep wrangler unless you are going to stay at your villa or your resort i think that renting a car is a must do so i think that covers the logistics of getting here, the house rental, the car rental. We have used the car a ton. Now I wanna to talk to you about what we did. Good morning from our very first wake up in St. Thomas. This is our balcony view. This is the outfit of the day. Come on, Zoe. You wanna show your outfit too? These are the pieces that I surprisingly bought from Target. I, it's very windy. I put a crop top on underneath. Got some flippies on. We are going to the top of Paradise Pier. I don't know what the name of it is, but I think it's gonna be windy. This is linen, so I'm hoping it's breathable. I tied it. I think that's the right thing to do to make it not look like pajamas. All the girlies are coming. It's gonna be a fun day. Zoe is in one of her very favorite crop tops, her sun hat. She has her camera to take pictures. This is the outfit of the day, seven-year-old Taurus style with flippy floppies, and look, our toe colors match. Besties. Anything you want to share, Zoe? No. No? Okay. And the ever fashionable Miss Callie Isla Craig. She is wearing also her Target two piece set. The Easter Bunny brought this cute basket. She's got waters inside. What else do you have in there? What's, what's it? Oh, you've got glasses, a yogurt, hydration. She is wearing her cousin's cute hat. Adorable sharing. She's got sandals. And you've got each other. Are you excited, girlies? Cute. On our first full day here, there was a little bit of rain in the morning and it didn't look like the picture perfect beach day, which you are seeing behind me now. So we decided, I want to get the name right, we decided to go to Paradise Point, which is a sky ride gondola tram up to the top of St. Thomas where you get incredible views of all of the bays and it's home to St. Thomas's frozen tropical concoction called the Bushwhacker, which Mark has now declared is his favorite tropical drink. The gondola tickets are not necessarily inexpensive. I think we paid in the 60s for two adults and a child. It does come round trip, but I don't know where else you would be able to get those views because you are quite literally at the top of the island and there are local shops there's a bar up there where both the food and the drink was really really good and you get to support some local businesses while you're up there i bought an incredibly cute bag that i used all week ashley bought a bag we bought things for the girls i think it was well worth it we actually spent three or four hours just on the top kind of taking in the views i'm sure there will be photos on instagram this week where i will
will be tagging this particular location. And the gondola ride was really cool. It felt sturdy, if that's something you're concerned about. You can also drive up, which we did both. And I thought the driving up was actually much scarier than the gondola ride. So if you're looking for like a family friendly thing to do, that is something I would recommend. And if the weather's not cooperating, you can bundle your gondola ticket with a museum ticket because there's a pirate museum right next door. And that evening, after the weather cleared and we spent some time by the pool, we went to Lanai Lime Tree Beach, which is a hotel in this area. It's actually right up the road from us for dinner. A few of us went back twice to Lanai because it's a beautiful location. And I know this is going to sound snobby coming out of my mouth, but it's one of the only places that I found there to be good wine on St. Thomas. St. Thomas is very much like a fruity cocktail type of place, but because I can't do too much sugar in my drinks, like those frozen, beautiful, multicolor rainbow drinks that I think look beautiful, I can't have that. That will immediately give me dumping syndrome. So trying to avoid that on vacation, we did go, end up going back there for a little nightcap at one point. I thought the food here was good. What was better was the view. I thought the actual lime tree beach area was gorgeous. The girls could run on the beach and play in the sand when we were waiting for dinner. We sat out on an actual lanai. It gave me very much like Hawaiian vibes. If you're willing to spend the extra money for the beauty of the location, this is something I would recommend. If not, there are other places that will cost you less but have the same quality of food. We've changed areas because the girls are now out at the pool, so I thought I might spare you the splashing and screaming of girls living it up on their last day before we have to spend a very long time on an airplane. So on the first morning that we woke up and it was gorgeously sunny, we thought this villa has access to a private beach called Abby's Beach. And we thought we would traverse down to Abby's Beach and spend the morning there because we had an evening sunset cruise. When we looked at the trail to get to the beach, we realized that it would be a harrowing walk down and a more difficult walk back with wet bodies and all of the stuff that we have. So we did a little research and we decided to go to Megan's Bay Beach. I don't know if it's Megan or Megan. If you live here or know more than I do, please, can you let me know in the comments below? It's spelled M-A-G-A-N. Now, this was my second favorite beach that we visited while we were here because we didn't actually repeat and go back to any of the same ones. It was beautiful and pristine, really quiet and empty. We were able to rent beach chairs. I think they were, I want to say there were $20 each. We rented beach chairs on every beach that we went to and they ranged from 10 to 20 per chair. So we typically would grab some for the adults and then the kids could kind of hop onto any chair that was open. Um, you could definitely bring your own beach chair or sit in the sand, but that's not really how I like to enjoy my beach days. But this was absolutely gorgeous. The water was like crystal turquoisey Caribbean clear. It was beautiful. I would recommend visiting there. There was a beach hut. It was a full restaurant at Megan's Bay. Um, and I thought the food there was really good. My dad got conch fritters. Well, I, I begged him to get them so that he would share them with me because I knew I couldn't eat all of them. My sister and I, I believe we split, no, Mark and I split a Johnny cake, a ham and cheese Johnny cake, and a sandwich of some kind, a jerk chicken sandwich probably. The food there was great. The atmosphere was great. It was not too crowded. Would recommend exploring out there. And then in the evening, we booked for my dad for his birthday, which is in February, a sunset cruise. This was out of Belongo Bay Beach Resort, which is a really cute, it's the only family owned hotel on the island. They have a really beautiful bar pool area with nightlife, it's all outside, and they have lovely beach access. We took a sunset cruise through a company called Heavenly Days. I will leave that linked in the description box below. The crew was so much fun. There were three of them. Captain Kendall was our captain. We had rum drinks. I did not. I didn't drink anything on the Sunset Cruise. It is also meant to be like a cocktail cruise, but I worry about getting 
seasick while on sunset cruises the last time we did one was when we were in hawaii i didn't drink on that either we started off really slowly going through the islands this was or different coves of this island it was a two-hour cruise i thought it was reasonably priced especially for what it was we had some snacks on board there were not that many people so we had we received a lot of attention we were able to get family photos i will insert all of the clips from that but that was definitely something i would absolutely recommend whether you're here and need a romantic night out whether you're here celebrating something or if you're coming with kids the girls had a great time and could have stayed on longer we were just worried that anything beyond two hours would feel like okay it's time for them to get off now before they start having behaviors and it wasn't like that at all they were highly entertained so i think in general the next day was my favorite overall day here on this island good early morning to you from a beautiful view let me turn you around i think my camera lens is fogging up a bit because it's more humid today this is my current view you may hear a friendly rooster in the distance i don't know if you can tell i don't have <laughs> there's the rooster i don't have very much makeup on because we're going to the beach today no surprise we're in the caribbean so that makes sense um but we are headed to an island here called water island we have to take a ferry over and then there's like fun activities to do during the day and then we have jet skiing this afternoon at a different beach but i woke up I don't know if you can tell how swollen my eyelids are and I couldn't put my watch on because I'm I'm swollen and I don't really know why it could be dehydration we've talked about this that I am not great at water intake whilst away from my normal routine and I tried I, I brought it I actually did bring a cup with me this time I brought a corksicle cup that my sister gave me for Christmas it's very cute it's Cinderella themed you cannot drink the like tap water here all of the water here is collected from rain and then it funnels into like aquifers and cisterns so the native population of this island um, recommends that you don't drink it straight out of the tap so you have to buy all of your own bottled water which one the amount of plastic we're going through because there are like 11 of us here in this house but two i'm like more conscious of the fact that i have to purchase water so I'm not doing that as often. Anyway, um, I'm hoping that being outside in the salt water will alleviate this puffiness. Nothing hurts. It's just like I woke up and was like, I'm so puffy. I did some facial massage. I did a cold compress on my face. Salt water cures all. So we have two exciting things planned for the day. Yesterday we spent the day on Megan's Beach, Megan's Bay which was like a 20 minute drive from the house and holy cow, so worth it. It's wild to me that this island, which isn't that big, has like such different foliage and climates. Like when we got to the side of the island of Megan's Bay, it was humid and there was more like tropical foliage where where we are there's obviously greenery but it's more like desertous and dry heat. So I'll be interested to see today what the different places are like when we go to them um and then we had our sunset cruise last night which was glorious we saw dolphins um off the side of the catamaran we went with a group called heavenly days i'll make sure they're linked below i would highly recommend good morning mermaids good morning. i saw zizi in the background too i love you i love you too look at these cuties i'm so lucky um, Mama. what did you guys think of the boat cruise last night? Awesome. 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 Yeah, it was pretty great. I was a little worried about being seasick, but that did not happen. No, I, I didn't like that the sunset was behind the clouds. Yeah, the sunset, well, at the beginning, but at the end, it wasn't behind the clouds anymore. Um, I saw a rainbow. You did? Guess what like, I saw. It was like a rainbow sunset. You wow. Mean, you mean moonbow? <laughs> That's what they're called. Is that a thing? Yeah. Miss Fatiska saw one. That was funny. And then the lady, and then, <laughs> and then he said, are these your sandals? And they and were then, my flip flops. Oh. And then, and the, then, and then, the, and then the lady said, are these your sandals? And, I was and like, then she said, yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Char. Look at, look at this little crowd that I get to be with all week. Yeah. All the my little babies. kids. All my kiddos. My baby. No, you're, you're my mama. Uh -uh. 
I, I know. Oh, Charlie's got her chicken. Oh. Charlie's got her chicken. <laughs> are you guys excited? Chicken jet ski. Oh, yeah, are we excited to jet ski later? Yeah. Yeah. Jet ski. Jet ski. Are you gonna jet. Are you gonna ride with me or Daddy? I think we rented two. Are you gonna go faster than Daddy? No. Okay, then I'm going with Daddy. <laughs> I thought you'd want to come with me. No, Hi. Mama. That chicken is so yeah, fun. So much All right, much let's get ready for our adventure. <laughs> oh, but you get, but you always get a golf cart in there. We went to Honeymoon Bay Beach, which was my favorite beach that we visited on Water Island. So we did take a little ferry over to Water Island and then we rented golf carts when we got there and we were able to drive ourselves to the beach. which was absolutely stunning. It was empty. There was a restaurant right on the beach, a restaurant and bar called Dingy's. We were able to rent chairs. There were like floating little stages in the water that the girls absolutely loved because they treated it as their own personal entertainment venue all day long. If you are not necessarily a beach goer, you can rent your golf cart and go explore on Water Island, which is little, there's like little shops, art booths, food, ice cream, bars. This was such a great day. Go to Water Island. Spend the money on the taxi, the water taxi. If you don't do anything else, get the golf cart. Go explore. It was so fun. The food there was delicious, as were the drinks. Sorry, there's a dog that just started howling here. I was actually sad when we had to leave Water Island, but we were leaving to go to jet skiing. So we jet skied at Sapphire Beach through Coastal Water Sports. And yes, we brought two of the three girls with us because you can have a kiddo sit in front of you. Everybody has to wear a life jacket. I haven't jet skied since I was like 14 or 15 when we actually went on a family vacation. And to be honest, I was nervous. I was a little scared. I was very excited to see the water. There was a huge area that we could explore on our jet skis, but I was nervous about falling off, flipping it, breaking it, hurting myself, not being able to get back on. None of those things happened. All went smoothly. I controlled my speed. Callie chose to go with Mark because he was originally going to go much faster than I was. And I think it varied, but I also got to travel farther out more slowly because I wasn't pressured by an adventure hungry seven year old to make me go faster. If you are looking for an adventure, you can rent boats, you can go parasailing, Explore Sapphire Beach Bay area. There's a resort there, but there's also a lot to do. And then right from jet skiing, we changed in a like bathroom trailer area. That's where I wore my hot pink romper and we went to dinner at Margaritaville because of course, is this a real vacation for Mark if we don't find a Margaritaville somewhere? His goal is to find and go to as many Margaritavilles as he possibly can this year. So we went there and honestly, it was underwhelming. The service was lovely. The food took a really, really long time. We did get to see a cool bird. We went there for Mark. It definitely wasn't his favorite restaurant though, but I got to wear my hot pink romper, so I was happy about that. I'm going to skip over Keneal Bay because I covered that, that whole day separately with my Would I Do It Again in that video. We'll link that in the description box below too if you are interested in watching. My battery died, so apologies if this camera angle is off or different. So on our final full day, we had a dolphin experience booked at Coral World Park, which is the local aquarium here in St. Thomas, and it was 100% worth it. When we initially paid for this, we thought, okay, the actual experience itself isn't that long. Is this going to be worth it? The answer is yes. We got to meet a dolphin named Liko. We were on this underwater submerged platform. They have different experiences based on the ages of kids, but none of our kids qualified for anything more than what we did with them. But we got to watch this animal do tricks, ask questions. We got to touch his, like the top of his body and his belly. He waved to us, he 
splashed us. I will insert some photos of this experience, but I think this is one of the most memorable things to come out of this vacation, at least for Callie. We went a little bit early to Coral World because we wanted to see the rest of the aquarium and I'm so glad we went early. We'll get to that in a moment. But we were able to see a shark feeding encounter with both nurse and lemon sharks. We got to see sea turtles. They have this huge underwater viewing area in, in like, it almost looks like a huge tent over water it's really cool plus they have an aviary like exhibit in the back the most iguanas i have ever seen in my life actually was a little scared at that point they have really cool things but everything on this island runs off of cruise ship visits so when we were leaving coral world it wasn't even four o'clock yet and it was closed so we were like the last guests out because we had booked the dolphin encounter experience so if you are going to coral world would recommend that you look at the cruise ship schedule go in the morning or book yourself a really cool encounter but go earlier than that you probably need an hour and a half to two hours for the rest of the aquarium it's not huge, but it has really cool stuff. And there's also food, a gift shop, a bar inside. So if you're thinking you need to eat before you go, you don't. You have access to all of that there. If we were ever to come back to St. Thomas and Callie was older, I would book additional experiences there. The staff was incredibly welcoming. They were very knowledgeable. I would go back there. And keep in mind, my daughter claims right now she wants to be a marine biologist, so she deeply wanted to see like all of the exhibits. What we did prior to that is something I would not ever recommend. We went to Koki Beach, which is quite literally right next door to the aquarium and why we went. When we researched Koki Beach, we found out that there were chair rentals, umbrellas, uh, a bar, food, and then little shopping vendors. This is Koki Beach. There are three cruise ships in today. So this is definitely the busiest beach that we've been to and they have vendors coming around with like jewelry and hair braiding, food and drinks. I will say that this is my least favorite beach even though the water is still glorious. It's just a lot of humans. It's very little. But this building right here is the aquarium and that's where we're headed later. So we thought we would start at the beach have lunch. The girls are obviously still having a great time. Here they are. There's really good snorkeling here too. But it just wouldn't be my first pick. We do have an umbrella set up. We rented beach chairs. Five beach chairs and two umbrellas with $65. It's a little higher than we paid in other places, but my guess is that's because of the popularity. By these rocks out near the aquarium there is really good snorkeling we were told it is the easiest snorkeling on the island because you don't actually have to go off of a boat so yeah they're reading girlies are in the ocean and playing in the sand brought our floats this this is the traditional when your cruise ship comes in this is where the excursion goes beach there were three ships in yesterday. The beach was wildly crowded and too small to be as crowded as it was. People were imbibing on things on the beach that I didn't want my girls to smell or see. It felt a little uncleanly. Based on the other two beaches we'd gone to and even seen at Keneal and Sapphire Beach, this was definitely like the dirtiest of the beaches and I was a little antsy to go honestly I was kind of icked by being there but because of its convenience that's where we went and of course we didn't know any of those things about that beach until we arrived and at that point we had already toted all of the rafts the tubes the flippers the goggles the girls all of the things we had a plan so we stayed for a few hours and then we ended up leaving a little bit early to go to the museum and i'm or the aquarium and i'm really glad we did so if you're coming koki beach does have allegedly some of st thomas's best snorkeling but maybe go there on a day when there aren't three cruise ships like know the cruise schedules so that way you know what's going to be open mark and i did things like go to the rum hut in the evening which is this really cool octagon shaped bar where you sit on swings to have rum drinks 
and because it was a non-cruise ship day they closed at 8 30. so we went I swang, Mark had a cocktail, and then we came home, but we were home by 8.30, which is totally fine. We are early to bed, early to rise people. But if you know the cruise ship schedule, things that are open and closed, their timings will make more sense to you. Also, it is well known that Monday and Tuesday days here, a lot of restaurants in the evenings aren't open. So do your research before you come. Most places don't take reservations, but at least if you come with the list of places that you want to eat, that way you can research when they're open. And we closed our vacation on a high last night at a place that Mark had researched called Duffy's Love Shack. Now Duffy, right? Disney fans, you know that that's a place we have to go anyway. Add to it that it is a tin roof tiki bar here on a Caribbean island, and that makes it a must do if you are anything like my family. If you've been here long enough, you've watched the Nashville vlogs, you know that my husband is like a tiki expert. He loves tiki culture. It's why he loves the Polynesian and Hawaii so very much. So this was a must do. It's very tiny inside, but it's also in a strange parking lot in the Red Hook area of St. Thomas. So we were eating outside because there are 10 of us, which I thought was going to be weird because it's just adjacent to this tiki bar and it wasn't weird. Mark went all in and got this 50 ounce volcano cocktail that he shared with other people at the table. He got a Caribbean themed poo poo platter. I went off script and got ribs with tamarind barbecue sauce because tamarind is like a sweet tropical fruit and I didn't pick them up and eat them off the bone. I've talked about that. I can't really do that, but I did cut them. They were delightful. I had two and gave the rest to Mark. He had a full feast. He wore his favorite tropical shirt. We bought tiki mugs to take home. Red Hook is a really cute area that I do wish we explored more. There was a restaurant called The Easterly, which I went. We wish we were able to have a drink in. After we placed our orders, I took the girls shopping across the street. That is an area that I think that is a must do. And Duffy's Love Shack, the service was incredible. The food was delightful. The drinks were really fun please go, it's incredibly fun. And that, my loves, is going to round out my tips for St. Thomas when traveling, especially if you are traveling with littles, because we all know that that makes traveling a little more challenging, but there are definite things that you can be doing on this island. Getting a space that has a pool, 100% is necessary, especially if you're coming in warm to hot months. We are here in April and it has been very hot. So the pools come in handy every single day. Honeymoon Bay Beach is a must do. Megan's Beach Bay is a must do. Water Island, the golf carts, all must do's. And I am certain because we were only here for a total of six days that there are things that I'm not even touching on this list, but I think for the amount of time that we were here, we did a ton of things, which is kind of how we like to travel. I still feel relaxed because among those things are beach days, right? Or at least half days at the beach where we're reading and relaxing and floating on our floats and drinking sunflowers, by the way, at Water Island. They have a cocktail called the Sunflower and it's pineapple juice with champagne. My favorite of this whole trip. If you have any questions, if you want specific pricings for things or links, will you leave that in the comments below? I am gonna fill this description box with as much information as I can. Any of the small businesses that I'm recommending, I am actually recommending. Like I'm not just linking them to link them. I think that they are worth your hard earned tourist dollars. I hope that this video has been helpful and informative for you and the clips have been fun to watch. I am going to miss the warmth and sunshine because I know that when I'm editing this, I will be home, back home on Cape Cod awaiting days just like this for the summer. I hope you're well. I hope you are rested and feeling ready to take on a new month. You know I love you and we will see you next week. Bye friends.